I speak a lot about freedom. Freedom from the identification with the self, the, the identity that the mind creates based in thought and memory. Whereby if I eliminated the image you hold of yourself in your mind, you are still here, looking, breathing, moving, and that image is gone. And so the, the core nature of what you are is not that image. And I also speak about the bondage of our vitality to the world. When the body itself becomes compulsively hooked and addicted to certain ways of being, certain pleasures, etc. that are detrimental to us, to us flowering our best flower in this world. <clears throat> Whereby if you manage to protect the gift of the vitality that is pouring through and as the shape you are from the generous heart of God, if you nurture that and you, you move to live without the selfish ambition of that identity in thought, then you may manifest something profoundly beautiful here on earth. But if you are using that vitality to sell your energy into the extraction of others to take money from you with, with short-term pleasures, etc., then you will not manifest that flower. You will not flower your flower. You will not fruit your fruit, as Yeshua said. You will know them by their fruits, and there will be fruits. There has to be fruits. And so I speak of this freedom. And freedom from the limitations energetically we face when we live through the mind and these perceptions that are given to us about how a human functions in this realm. And so the more you speak of freedom, you have to ask, is this therefore a prison? Is this what is being said? Is this what's being pointed toward? For Yeshua came and left a clear message that we must find a rebirth away from the 3D body and its self and its impulses and the desires of it. We must find a rebirth to live by spirit, not flesh. Buddha, Krishna, overcoming the lower nature of ourselves, seeing through the illusion of Maya, is the story of spiritual rebirth one of liberation from a prison? Is the story of enlightenment one of liberation from a prison? Now I value my life dearly as a human. I love being a human being. I love the life that I am leading. I love my children. I love the beauty of the forest, of, of nature. I love the beauty of what humans can create. But I seek to find that connection to source, the divine within who I am to guide all that I am, and therefore I give my thanksgiving to the creator of all things, not to creation. And so I don't devalue this world. I see its beauty, believe me, I bathe in its beauty. But if you look at the way life can be here. Some humans, this place is miserable. They are addicted to things that the world has to offer, substances that grow out of the earth, uh, substances that man has created, and also do create themselves in nature, such as alcohol. They are 
living in a state where they feel so isolated from everything around them as this little personal identity inside of them that they are depressed to the degree that they can't live with themselves and they don't grasp there's two characters here I and myself and so they end up committing suicide even and this is when this world can become a profound burden and indeed a prison and so you're left with a few questions to reconcile this you're left with a few options Number one, the beauty is that it does come from the generous heart of God. But at some point in the timeline of this world that we are in, something interfered. Something interfered with the core design, with the base design. Biblically, that worldview is held. <clears throat> the world was well and it fell. Something made the world fall, and it's denoted with, of course, symbolic stories with Adam and Eve and the tree. But I've said often, you know, Adam, Eve is split from Adam to start the multiplication of life. But if you split an electron from an atom, you start the multiplication of energy and with it life. And so there's a deep metaphorical element to it. And so whatever that symbolized, then the world that was whole and in the realm of God's perfect creation fell. It was tampered with, we can say it was interfered with due to something that went on, some poisonous element that occurred from either the emittance of the human consciousness or it occurred from something different perhaps. Perhaps that story symbolizes something we don't grasp and we'll exp I'll explore this. The other option is that God simply created it this way. So as we would be in this realm and we would learn something from, from this escape, from its offers and from self. I disagree with this because the God that has led my life doesn't seem to see the value in everything here. Doesn't seem to vote for everything that's manifesting here. And therefore, to say it's just merely the design as a learning school, I, I disagree with that. And the other option is that this world was created by a, a lesser God, a creator God. And for all the beauty of the source code, we can call it, the original generous heart of God, the source code of all things, is present. And therefore, you see the beauty of God here. The workings of it are different. And due to the workings being different, this false creator God made a, a different world to the one that we believe upon. The, 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 the world that we would see a compassionate God creating with all this immense pain, suffering and disease and struggle. These are the three ways you can reconcile this. And, and Christianity reconciled it one way. You could say that the notion God created it all so as we can learn and grow, etc., that this indeed is kind of touched upon with the notions of Hinduism and the Brahman. And then the other is spoken of in the Gnostic Gospels. The Nag Hammadi say this world was created by an amnesic god called an Archon. And the Bible still says the ruler of this world is Satan. It says the god of this world is Satan. And so how is it then that we have this world whereby there is, for instance, a satanic ruler? Well, I think and feel from all that I've gone through that it is true that if you come down to the base nature of the body in this world, if you make nature your God, then you will make your sexual impulse your God, you will make survival of the fittest your God, and you will make all of these things into your religion. And yet this is clearly not the message of love and compassion that Yeshua left or that even the Islam points to, etc. Or Buddhism and so on. And so following nature as your God and its impulses doesn't work. The one who built the weapons, which is where we are, the human who builds the weapons fastest gets the one. It used to be that the largest in the animal kingdom is the winner. That's how it works most of the time in, in 
I've spent a lot of time on the plains in Africa. I'm very blessed to say that. And the largest wins, the largest coalition of lions is always the winner. But in the human story, when we developed intellect, the big human didn't matter anymore because the small human who knew how to build a bow and arrow when the big one didn't was automatically the winner because he could stop him at a distance. And so it altered and our intelligence came in and still to this day that's kind of playing out. We are still living by that rule of nature whereby the nations with the greatest weaponry are the ones in charge and with the greatest wealth. And they use that wealth to develop more weaponry, <clears throat> to hone and harness intelligence for that purpose, for ability to threaten, etc. And so the world is largely still obeying that sphere. But Christianity is not supposed to be that, and so nations who say they are Christian will continue that path. They are not transformed. It's just not a true Christianity. It's not a representation of what Yeshua taught at all. It's a representation of man's construction around this teaching. A teaching that had enough validity to construct a, a religion around because we recognize the innate truth of the love that he spoke of and yet we didn't have the transformation within us to bring that love. We still continued in this world with, with these perceptions of duality which is where the religion failed in the transformation of mankind because we tried to take the non-dual teaching of Yeshua which allows all man to see through the loving heart of God and we tried to approach it with a dualistic consciousness which doesn't allow for that love to come. And so the change would be to recognize that the source code, when connected to, kind of flips a switch in the human. As Yeshua showed, my Father's kingdom is not, is not of this world. The source code, let, let's use some technological language a moment. We investigate, is this a prison planet? And I say I go with the notion that God's creation is here. But there's an interference by a force. And that force is satanic. But before we delve into that, what is satanic? Satanic is, here is the generous heart of God pouring forth all things. You surrender to it and its will and its compassion. You take the Christic path. When you say no to surrender and you live as a separate self that controls your intelligence by its own selfish ambition, then you make the choice to dismantle it and supersede it. The satanic path is one of wishing to supersede the creation field of God, wishing to become God. Therefore, the satanic energy can represent itself in any sentient life, human, or sentient life like a human that isn't here on earth, or in another dimension perhaps, another corner of space. That satanic manifestation of energy can come through any sentient life. The source code, call it that. Let's use technological language a moment. The source code, the generous heart of God. That is the base of reality, pouring forth all things, including infinite potential and free will. Beyond there, let's say you have a species that's hyper-advanced, or the fallen angels who came from the heavenly realm. And let's say they are hyper-advanced and they have technology. And therefore, how would you want to control a reality if you are using sentience and you are not having some spiritual power that you and I don't understand? Just to put it in a framework, our human perceptions can, can digest. AI would do it. Our AI systems now are quite profound. Imagine if that had been developed for thousands of years. AI could easily simulate a reality. For it could, through intellectual dissection, understand endless fragments of the generous heart of God pouring forth creation. 
and a sentient species could use AI to simulate by collecting the data from those fragments and manifesting. And so you take the source code and you take a species who chose not to surrender to the source code and its will, but chose the satanic path of superseding it. And they develop systems of technology and they develop AI because we have, so they presumably would. And then they write into the original code their own matrix, their own elements of reality. And they do it, be, do it because they wanted to be God, remember. They wanted to mimic God. They wanted to create as God creates. They wanted the power of God. But now you have a human species inside a world that you've tampered with, with your AI. But their connection to the source code is so profoundly deep that they reject the elements of your creation that the AI is running. Now let's say that this layer of AI reality that you layer over the source code of God, let's say that that layer serves a purpose for you. And that purpose is to fuel your energy needs because you have separated from the pouring forth of the generous heart of God. You have chosen to walk on selfish ambition, to try and be God yourself. And yet as you do that, the only infinite source of energy that you've ever known is that mystery of the generous heart of God pouring forth all things. And so now you must try to harness this mystery for all you understand a large percentage of the mystery. You must try to harness it to get the energy. You must try to get the light of it to, to retrieve the energy that you need. And perhaps that's the whole purpose of the demonic realm to make the light of God fall, to retrieve the energy needs. And so this, this human is inside a reality that you've tampered with, but it's not working because the source code speaks to them and they recognize that the offer of the reality is nonsense and so they stand over the top of it. They stand as Yeshua did, they conquer the world and they say, no, I'm not doing that. And so you must move in to the body itself and tamper with the body. Now this sounds out there, but the very first creation story on planet Earth, the oldest one that we know of, is the Sumerian, and it says that humanity, the original human of God, was tampered with by an alien force, a fallen alien force, who had chosen the satanic path, and that they did so to create a slave. To create that slave, they had to separate us from the unity with God so that the source code, the presence of God, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, couldn't speak to us anymore. And so they split our consciousness with dualistic thinking. They inputted genetically into the being <clears throat> that was here, that was moving in a different capacity, that had dominion over the rules of nature, just as Yeshua did and others do today, to to heal, to cast out the other dimensional forces that do not belong. They altered the human and created a dualism and separated them from that unity and separated them from that power as they did. For all the humans still remained in the generous heart of God. Now the divine within them, the divine righteousness within them that enters them is caught inside a system, the body, and the impulses and it's so loud in this reality because of the AI layer as well just a what if that now the human the soul of the human gets caught inside the belief that it is the body and it is sight and this world is all that there is and so now the mind of this organism has been added into it a dualistic state that builds a self-image and in building a self-image they recognized our slave masters if we can say this recognized that we would therefore become amnesic of our connection to source and there we would find a void and a longing and there they could enter and be the ruler of that species be the slave master because we no longer hear the voice of guidance and our vulnerability we look 
where have we gone? Where's our connection to spirit? And this other force comes and arrives and says, okay. And they may well have walked on earth, an actual force like this. Even the Old Testament kind of looks that way. The Old Testament God is clearly not the God of Yeshua in many elements. Asking for spoils of war, for virgins, for cattle. Why? It's like it's a mix of something, some history that we've forgotten. And so we have source code, AI, and now you have a human that has a slave technology in it that makes us amnesic. And in, in creating all of this inside this beautiful world where the presence of God is here, you kind of place a piece of perspex between the human, a piece of glass between the human and its ability to root itself inside the source code of God. And so they run around on top of this glass amnesic. And because they're not connected to the source code, because of these programs running and the awareness of their soul has been captured in the brain and they, they can't feel the connection, they run around in this amnesic state. And as they do, you keep offering them things to make them worship your reality that you created, to make them worship your AI-generated world. And when they do worship it with their attention and their energy, instead of building up the source code energy to manifest the will of God, they choose their own selfish will just as you have and they sell that energy into your system. You get your energy needs, for the light of God can only fall in a sentient life with free will. You can't make the sun fall, etc. It's shining. And so the elements that were, that were hacked in have now taken the human for a long time on this immense journey of struggle and suffering. And many masters who deprogrammed the slave technology, let's call it that, and I've said this before, enlightenment, spiritual rebirth to deprogram the slave technology, you peer over the top of it. You recognize when you see through the programs of the mind you see back at the mind and say, that really wasn't very helpful. It, it wasn't a particularly helpful design of nature. And when you reach there as well, I've witnessed that a compassionate force, which must be God, reaches in and says, let's start addressing now this world. For Yeshua came into this dimension and men like Yeshua and brought within this dimension a new opportunity bringing, dragging the source code into the AI matrix. Let's call, keep with this language so we can grasp these spiritual terms in a modern language. I hope it helps for some. It does with who I am. Yeshua came and added a new program to that AI matrix that allowed us to overcome it. And many are overcoming it, but many are not. Many are not. And so is this a prison planet? Well, if it were, that would be a potential structure. With AI, etc. But the Mayans said humans were created by an alien species. The Sumerians said humans were created as a slave by an alien species. But if you look at it from the slave self, the slave technology, the dualistic fallen consciousness of the Bible, the fall of Adam and Eve, this self-consciousness. If you look at it from there, slave would be one who digs for you and carries things. But if you look at it without that, if you look at it with consciousness, which doesn't have that there, you would recognize that the truth is not this reality because you connect to your soul. You connect to that potency, that unity beyond it, beyond all of that struggle of this world. And you would say perhaps that slave is energetic. And therefore, the rulers of this world, the ruler of this world is Satan, as Yeshua said. And the whole way that the system is just abusing mankind, having him build his own electronic prisons, having people miserable and depressed, when the exit for that is not to to tell you to wear a different dual suit, it's to liberate you from non-duality. 
And I know that the masters and religions of this planet that have built the cities like Washington DC and the Crown of London, that they know non-duality, because I know their religion. But the difference is when you enter non-duality, you can choose the path of Christ and the surrender, or you can choose the path of Satan and the superseding. And therefore, if you achieve non-duality and choose the path of superseding and choose the path of Satan, then everybody merely becomes fodder in your way. When I had an out-of-body experience and I spoke to the fallen, I saw them. They said, when you drive your car and you hit some insects, is it personal? And I recognized what they were calling me was an insect on the front of a bumper of a car, to them, to their capacity, to their awareness, which of course in itself is, is satanic and unconscious. But we can't be blamed for that, for our consciousness is hacked by this dualistic state that they believe to be power and that biblically is believed to be weakness, that Yeshua said is weakness, he showed it. You must be reborn. You must not analyze everything and collect as much data as possible. You must let go and allow the Spirit of God to move in you. So is it a prison? Well, the body in and of itself is a prison for many even today. And the impulses of the body to addiction is a prison for many today. Elements of this reality seem to lead us towards this as well, towards pounding us into that state. And therefore, be it a prison, be it a natural occurrence of randomness, which I, I can't see because of the communications from God to help eradicate the problems and suffering that have been born inside this world. Then calling it a prison probably doesn't help what we can call it is a space where God wishes to rectify the wrong of a fallen time of mankind and another species. And to rectify that, we must be free of the self. We must be free of the mind-based identity and allow the spirit and its love and its frequency to animate our intelligence and our love and our speech. And there we become ultimate loving beings, for the love with which we love is the love that we are there, and it knows no condition. And so perhaps in elements it was intended to be a prison, and we were intended to be slaves. But it's better to look at it as a world that God is improving, day by day, so long as his children choose his will. So long as his children let go of self and selfish ambition and let the Spirit of God animate their intelligence. And so long as they have the capacity that their mind does not try to own that. And this is the best way to see it, I feel. I believe there are some deer over here. They've distracted me once or twice. I guess I will leave it there. God bless, guys. All is well. God is here. And God is in your life. And is made manifest to the degree that thought and self 